What's up, everybody? So this week in Nano, we get to hang out with some of the members of the Nano Core team and hear what's going on. Today, we got Lee, Troy, and Brian. So I'm wondering if you guys could introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about what you do. Hey, everybody. I'm Troy. I do uh, public relations communication stuff for the Nano Foundation. I'm Lee. I'm a protocol developer, and I've recently been working on Epoch Blocks. And I am Brian. I'm, I'm the head of the Nano Center. Sweet. And I'm Sean. I'm the host of the NanoCast. Why don't we uh, start with some protocol updates? Lee, what's going on uh, with some of that stuff? Yeah, so we'll be releasing Epoch blocks soon. So those signal a, uh, those signal a new version in the network where there will only be state blocks. So state blocks have been around for a while, but they've been optional. Um, you can still use uh, the old types of blocks like send, receive, open, and change. Um, epoch blocks will uh, disable future creation of old blocks. And how they do that is each uh, account chain gets its own epoch block. And from that point forward, uh, you must use state blocks. Um, the Genesis accounts will sign for those uh, epoch blocks. So even if there's an old account that nobody has the key to anymore, it will get an epoch block from the Genesis account, which makes sure that um, the network will be completely upgraded and there will be no more old blocks, which helps a lot with um, optimizations that depend on state blocks. And is this uh, an update? that's just gonna happen on the network or does it come with like a standard like release? Well, Epoch blocks were already included a couple of releases ago. So the network is already prepared to accept them. We just have to generate them and distribute them. And this is a little bit of a different way of a network upgrade than we did with the Canary block before, correct? Yeah, so uh, Canary blocks uh, are useful for some types of upgrades, but in this we would have a problem with them. So if uh, the canary block was released about the same time as an old block was released, and by old block I mean uh, not a state block, um, then some nodes might think the canary came first, while some nodes might think that the uh, old block came first. So they want to know whether to accept it or not. Uh, with epoch blocks, it turns it into a fork scenario if it happens the same time as an old block. And we already have a bunch of code dedicated to voting on those forks and making sure that they will result correctly. How, how would this upgrade, is it going to affect services, exchanges, anything like that around Nano? Uh, for the most part, it shouldn't because these epoch blocks are a type of state block. Uh, they look like a state receive, except for they don't change the balance or the representative. Um, for wallets, it will be like if somebody exported the seed and created a transaction outside of the wallet. So if, uh, if you can accommodate that, then epoch blocks will go smoothly. Yeah, and we'll be reaching out to uh, several of the services to make sure that everything is going to be okay with them. Uh, we're going to set up a call, I think, on Saturday uh, where any of them are free to join um, and go over any kind of issues that they might have or any concerns that they might have. Um, if for some reason there is a breaking change and they need some time, we might wait a little bit for the epoch blocks, um, but all signs point to going ahead with them next week. All right, and with the starting of epoch blocks, what does this clear the way through for? Um, well, mainly this will make development eff efforts easier because uh, we can assume that new blocks are state blocks, but it will also clear the way for snapshotting, hopefully, because epoch blocks give the network um, a single point in time that you can reference across all accounts. So it's a great place to start a snapshot, and uh, snapshotting efforts will probably use these epoch blocks as their starting point. Yeah, and I did, uh, I looked, I, I was talking to Ryan who runs Nanocrawler earlier, and you'll be able to see the epoch blocks when you go to your account 
to view your account chain, it'll be on there and it'll say Epoch Block on there. He has it set up for the beta network, so we've already seen when the Epoch Blocks were done on the beta network, um, on his beta network block explorer, it does show up. So you will be able to see them. Um, I know for certain on Nano Crawler, um, and I would imagine too on Nanode, though I'm not sure how he uh, Armon has that set up. Great. And 16.2 was released last week, and it seems like that has been going well. Yeah, there isn't too many changes there. Um, just a couple of smaller bug fixes. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was just smaller bug fixes and basically getting the Mac build um, straightened out. Uh, when we launched 16.1, the Mac build really wasn't working. It was crashing. So 16.2 seems to be pretty stable. Uh, haven't had any complaints, I don't think, at all on it. Um, so ready to move forward. And this Great. is our. This is also 16.2 was our last version with a that we're calling by the number. Uh, it's all code names from here on out. Which is a great segue into Bolton. See how I did that? That's right. So Bolton is going to be uh, the next release. Uh, we're hoping it, or planning for it to hit the beta network next week, um, and then go live a week after that. Uh, obviously, development is tricky, so. If, if it needs to wait a little bit longer, it will, but uh, that will contain lazy bootstrapping, uh, which we've covered uh, a number of places. And like I, I put an uh, explainer out for the Epoch Blocks uh, today on, on Thursday, uh, and I will be doing another one uh, on lazy bootstrapping, kind of like an easy, um, digestible, easy to understand um, explainer on, on the benefits of lazy bootstrapping and the differences uh, from our current bootstrapping uh, system. Sweet. So when I think of a bootstrap, you know, I pull yourself by the bootstraps. I always think about the spurs on boots. So I hope that your illustration has a spur in it. It will. And maybe it'll have Lee in spurs. You know, I mean, the, this one had Lee chucking blocks from the Genesis account. So maybe that'll be kind of like the theme of all, of all these explainer diagrams. It'll just be Lee doing something. Lee the cowboy. Have him heavily involved. All right, so uh, let's uh, transition over to Brian and get an update on the Nano Center. Yeah, what's going on, Brian? Oh, hey, Troy. Thanks for asking. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, the Nano Center, I was gone for a couple weeks, um, but I'm back. And what we have going on, a couple things. Um, the website redesign is probably the uh, highlight right now uh, of what I'm targeting, what I'm going towards right now. Um, we met most of our goal for the website redesign with nano fluctuating so much. It's kind of been hard to keep up with the, uh, the funding status, but we're hanging around like 70 to 85% um, on the funding. So we've gone ahead and started work on that. Um, if you're active at all in our nano discord or uh, nano center discord, I should say, uh, you can see Jordy in there. He's been doing a lot of the uh, mock-ups for me for the web design. Um, and probably the start of early next week, I'll have Jeff doing uh, the development of the site, trying to really tack down some of the things Jordy has been doing. Um, and I think it's gonna be really nice. You know, it's gonna, I think gonna look a lot better, um, kind of have a Kickstarter vibe to it on the projects, which I think will work really well with what we wanna do. Um, and in addition, we're gonna have, hopefully a blog of some sorts, just for articles, um, people to dump their ideas and their opinions and things um, involved in the project specifically. Uh, and then a wiki, which I discussed some on Reddit, um, but hopefully just another dump of just links, um, disbursements, the Nano Center has been on projects, um, past and future ideas, just a number of things. So it should be nice. Um, yeah, and moving on from the website, uh, Jay has been working a lot on his distributed proof for work. Um, there's a lot of exciting things going on there. There's a number of services that have been using it. Um, it's kind of like an unheralded thing. I feel like right now, it, I think it has, uh, there's a lot of opportunity there for, uh, for Jay and for the network to really alleviate some of the stress put on the network uh, for this proof of work. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, and also Jay's doing the, uh, the Quake Alpha uh, at the moment, which I have not hopped on there yet. I know what? some of the guys have. I know, I haven't had time. Oh, I crashed I it five times. The first five oh. times I played it, crashed, my crashed the my game. My computer can't handle those crashes right now, as you know. So, well. I uh, 
they're doing some exciting things. There's a couple guys that have jumped in there to help them with the uh, binary compiling and everything. But uh, on a level that I can relate to, they're putting things like the Nano Center logos on uh, health packs and stuff in the actual game, which I think is insane. And I think it's really cool. Um, so I did talk to Jay briefly, and he said that hopefully next week they're going to have a, uh, a, the beta ready for the Quake. And then at that point, we're going to ask for some more testers for that. So that would be a lot of fun. Hopefully we can integrate something like the pvp.me site um, in there, um, have some betting going on outside of it. Uh, I played it for a while. I'm terrible. Um, I, I did some one-on-one -on -one and just was just we got filled with holes for well, about 15 minutes and and then had to go that's why you're there for everyone to gang up on but that's right uh, yeah they're, they're messing with like how much you can pay in and you can tip in game and just all sorts of really uh interesting things so i think i think it's gonna be cool i really do yeah all the microtransaction stuff it just highlights this you know that there's no fees that you can just send be sending these small amounts around quickly. Um, it's all very neat. I, I love, I love the different stuff that uh, that Jay integrates on into uh, Nano into. It's just so cool. It's like a, it's a new thing every week. Brian, the last time you were on, you uh, were there in the middle of a, a video competition. Did uh, anything cool come out of that? Oh, thanks, Sean. Thanks for bringing up the uh, bad memories. No, nothing right now. Uh, the market kind of think put a damper on uh, a lot of the enthusiasm just going on in the entire market. Uh, we didn't get really any uh, entries for the competition, so we just postponed it for now um, to a later date. Like I said, my uh, my short Reddit post that had a tinge of sadness to it. Uh, all the funds are going to be held in the wallet. Uh, they're they're in Orca's wallet still, Nano Orca. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna use it for the same purpose at a later date. Is he uh, still Nano Orca? I thought he was like Nano Tuna right now. I know it, it started as a whale. I think it's slightly it's, it's slowly gone down. There's a lot of different uh, species going on there. I'm not sure which one he is now. I think it is a tuna. Is plankton soon? Sorry, sorry for my my misspeaking. That's so embarrassing. <laughs> so, uh, Brian, speaking of, I don't know if it's a bad memory or not. This could go either way. Uh, there was a uh, member of the Nano Center that was heavily involved named Andy Johnson that now is on the, the foundation. Does that bring any we sadness? We stole him. Yeah, the name doesn't actually ring any bells, but he uh, sounds like a drink. Had, if we're putting his face everywhere. Yeah, that, that uh, stupid mug's face is plastered everywhere, but he, yeah. He was, he was laughing that you guys tweeted it again yesterday. He's like, it's back on Twitter. He's like, I thought I was done. I thought it was done. No. And they're, they're sending it back out. I told him I have to send it out over my personal Twitter account this weekend. I know. You just you peer into those eyes, just the, the sad, empty eyes. But uh, no, yeah, I posted, uh, I, I did tweet about that, I guess, last night it was. I was late to the party. I've been uh, moving across the states, which I seem like I do forever. But um, yeah, Andy went over to Core, which was really exciting. Uh, like I said in my tweet, he's a really good guy, uh, really dedicated to Nano and wants to see it thrive. And I think he's a really unique voice to the environment. So I'm excited for him. And I think it's a good addition. Yeah, Andy's been working with us, um, I would believe, since about the beginning of September. Um, you could tell when the, the social media stuff really picked up. Uh, a lot of that was Andy. Uh, he's been doing a great job. I'm pretty sure he's working like 23 and a half hours a day right now. I keep telling him, please go log off and go off, go hang out with your kids and go. And, he, and he's always right back on there. I think he, he, I think we announced him on the core team and then he went on vacation the next day though. So you know, we'll have to see. Yeah, he's on vacation now and I still see him on Discord and he made, it, he made it two hours into his vacation. It's ridiculous. I hear the kids going, daddy, please. Play with us, and he's just like, no, no, no. nano only. And it's just like, uh, I gotta get off the call. It's it's so uncomfortable. No, Andy's great. No, he's been a lot of. He's been great to work with. Uh, you know, on the non-developer side, you know, it's me, Austin, and Andy have really been um, working together, and it's been great. You know, I love both of them. Kind of all of us kind of got involved the same way as far as just being in the community and and participating, which is really what we look for. I know Lee was the same thing. Is how he got involved. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been a, a pleasure work with Andy and I look forward to keep continue. Yeah. And on that note, it's Andy getting involved and Lee getting involved with the community, um, through the community, I think just points out how integral the community is to the nano ecosystem. 
I mean, obviously that's why the Nanner Center was created and um, is a large part of what Andy's job is from what I can tell now. So um, I think it's all important and it's all good. It's a positive going forward. Yeah. We've always said that that's, that's the kind of people that we want to hire and bring onto the foundation is people that are just contributing, uh, people that are involved and, and have gotten involved because they, they see promise in Nana's future um, and, and are really interested in the project. You know, those are the people that are going to stay around. Those are the people that are going to keep working on it. Um, you know, if we put an ad on monster.com and hired somebody, they could get a, they could get a better offer than, you know, next week and, and leave. But if we really find somebody that's been, people that have been dedicated and just, just working because they love the project, um, it's, it's shown to be pr quite effective. Great. And, you know, last week we touched a little bit on uh, My Nano Ninja. Uh, and then this past week you highlighted him um, for the community highlight. Yeah, I'd been talking to him uh, last week, actually, right before uh, we did the podcast. And I said to him, I said, wait a second, how have I not done a spotlight on you? And I was like, I'm looking for projects. And like, this is one of my favorite ones. We talk all the time. You're, in, you're super active in the community. So I feel awful. And I said, we got we to gotta do it next week. Um, so, yeah. Uh, it was cool to sit down with Tobias. Uh, I don't know if you saw the picture. It's definitely one of my favorite images on it. Uh, I was so going to say the same thing. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, so it's the same designer, New West Dad, who's been doing a lot of Instagram stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite ones. And I saw in Tobias. In this video, he did the sidebar. This yeah, one. yeah, he did do the new sidebar for this. He did the cover photo for us uh, last week, and hopefully, I believe, this week again. Um, and I saw Tobias basically immediately snatched the ninja picture and threw it up on his site. Um, but yeah, My Nana Ninja is a great you know, central hub for representatives. Uh, almost all of the rebroadcasting representatives are signed up over there. And just a great place for people that are new to Nana that they can go and kind of get an idea of uh, how the votes are distributed across the network and you know, to help them find a representative that they can delegate their votes to. Sweet. And then uh, we got a new Fiat gateway this week. Yeah. So Payfair uh, launched us. They're a decentralized escrow platform and peer-to-peer -peer exchange, which ensures the paramount security of all cryptocurrency transactions made between two parties. They provide low fees for all transactions in a safe, private, and decentralized environment. So it's a little different than it. They I, paid I, you to say that. What? They totally paid you to say that. You think you can buy me? <laughs> How much do you think they'd have to pay me for it? I mean, for me to not, throw an not ad? Much. Not much. Not much. No, no, it wouldn't be. It's five nano. I mean, just, I'll say whatever you want. No, so Payfair has been great. They reached out, uh, I think at the beginning of September, they, they had said that they were going to launch nano. Um, and we, we had it heard from them. So I reached out and said, hey, let us, you know, Please, we'll assist you with anything you need. They got, got them in a telegram with Russell. Russell's been phenomenal working with these exchanges. He's basically 24-7 tech support. Um, so Russell and them uh, and their developers work together, and uh, they got launched last week. So excited to see them grow. I think it's a pretty small platform right now, but it's very promising. Um, so we'll be interested to follow, follow along with Payfair and uh, watch them build. Sweet. Uh, on uh, Reddit this past week, there's uh, and on Twitter, there's a lot of hype around how fast Nano is, um, particularly when it comes to transferring to Binance. That's cool. That's cool, right? I mean, it's always neat to see how Nano uh, stacks up against the other other cryptocurrencies. Um, so we were number one on there. Um, and uh, the thing with that is that we have recently been getting, uh, we've been asked a number of times kind of like, how fast is Nano? Um, or can you prove how fast Nano is? Um, so that's one of the things Mike has actually been working on. He's been uh, tracking confirmation times across the network. Um, I think he's seeing, and Lee, you might have to correct me, I think he's seeing between one and three seconds is kind of the normal speed with some outliers that are a little slower. Yeah, um, we're still working on uh, pinning down those out outliers it seems to be dependent on transaction volume at the time but um yeah i'd say that's about the normal confirmation time yes yeah, so we're just going to keep collecting data and um kind of get an idea of of how the confirm how quickly the confirmations are taking place on the network um and look forward to kind of we'll blog about it and release the information and uh let everybody check it out for themselves 
Sweet. Uh, one thing I've noticed about this, uh, this conversation today is I feel like not, obviously not all the core team members, but so many of the core team members have been mentioned. You know, there's just so many things going on um, with you guys. Yeah. Oh, and one last thing I want to want to bring up. I don't think I've announced it anywhere yet. Uh, and it will only matter to very few people, but for those that it will matter, it matters. Uh, Colin is coming to Boston next week. I believe Russell's also coming down to Boston and we are going to be doing a meetup in Boston ven venue to be determined next Thursday. So stay tuned. Uh, as soon as I lock down a venue, um, I will be sure to post about that and let everybody know where you can come hang out with us. Those are always so much fun. I can't wait. I haven't been to one since consensus in May. So really looking forward to it. All right. And uh, does anybody else have anything they want to talk about before we shut this down for the week? Shut it down. Nope. Nope. All right. Okay. Well, uh, thanks everybody for tuning into this short little sum up of what's been going on this past week and we will see you next time. Short, but informative. That's our new uh, tagline. That's our new tagline. Short, right. but informative. Short, but informative. Thanks everybody. All right. Bye guys.